So we begin the second canto of the book of yoga, the parable of the search for the soul. That is the title of the canto. And in the series of sections in Savitri, we are now on section 115. 115th section of Savitri. We have already seen earlier Savitri's condition in a certain way you are speaking helplessness at the same time well poised composed she gathering herself, everything into the inner being of hers. She has become quiet, mute. In fact, her grief had become so intense, so powerful that in itself turn into a person and that grief's self became calm, mute, immutably, dumb height, dissolved. Now it is in this state that Savitri's Yuga is about to begin. There is nothing now of this world, passion, vital impulses, relationships, thoughts, nothing is going to disturb her at the moment. Her state is such that she has become a perfect support, a perfect adhara for the occult and spiritual things to happen in her. She is now a well-prepared adhara. It is not get shaken by anything. It is only when the personality is stabilized, when there is no disturbance at all, that the higher powers, when they enter in, can easily work in a person. Savitri has now opened herself to that working, that the higher power can come and work into her. She is not going to disturb the working of that power. So that is already a great city, a yogic preparation she has accomplished. While she was enjoying the happiness of a married life, yet the yogic state of Invisamitri is, is something very remarkable. How does that happen? Normally, in the case of a common man who is turning towards spirituality, it takes long periods of time for any spiritual experience to happen in him. It doesn't happen today, tomorrow. It takes a long time before anything spiritual or occult can start working in the case of an ordinary aspirant soul. But here is Savitri who is now ready to receive the spiritual guidance and go entirely, totally, unreservedly on the path which will be shown to her. 
she has already accomplished that city. How did she do that? Well, actually, this is not the city we shall require recently in the past few days, past few weeks, past few months. It has been there with her, deep in the secret nature of hers, always there. She was born with that. And the moment the occasion comes, it expresses itself. Savitri has done the yoga through the ages, through lives, and it is that accumulated perfection, realization, which is now coming forward in the present birth of hers. Because it is from this point onward now that the new features of the yoga had to enter into her life. She has not to redo all that was already done by her in her past lives. With the present life, something new has to happen. She has become ready. It was during the entire period of one year in the company of Satyavan, in the company of the forest sages, in the spiritual atmosphere which are there all around, that the past got awakened in her and it is that now which is launching her into the future. Her future has to begin with that. Let us read the opening passages or you can too. As in the vigilance of the sleepless night, to the slow, heavy-footed, silent hours, repressing in her bosom his load of grief, she sat, staring in the dumb trade of time, and the approach of ever-nearing fate a summons from her being summit came, a sound, a call that broke the seals of night. Above her brows, where will the nourish meet, a mighty voice invaded mortal space. It seemed to come from inaccessible heights and yet was intimate with all the world and knew the meaning, the steps of time and saw eternal destinies, changeless seen, filling the far prospect as a cosmic gaze. Already the sweep of her realization, of her experience, of her beginning is as vast as a cosmic case. Already it is deep, profound, dense, powerful, as the power of herself, of her soul itself, a mighty voice. She could hold that mighty voice. She is not one who would be shattered by the impact of the voice. And that voice is a mighty voice also. She would not be. So the alhara, the support, is ready. The vessel to receive spiritual initiation 
is well made. Tapta. She has already done silent tapasya in her inner being and made the vessel ready to receive divine command. That is the state in which Savitri is there. This is what we are describing, what, what we see here in this brief introduction with which Devga of Savitri is being narrated to us. Already there are very significant hints given to us. One of the things which strikes us most here is the supernatural state in which all these things are happening. The character of Savitri Yoga is all the luminous occult kind. It is more tantric in nature than Vedantic. Hers is going to be the yoga of the tantra, not the yoga of the adhyatma kind. She is going to launch on a very special yoga of the tantra, not also so much the traditional tantra, but the tantra very specific to Savitri. She is there and already a high power comes and makes an entry into her forehead. That is an absolutely remarkable kind of beginning of the yoga. It doesn't happen in the case of an ordinary yogi. The Kundalini starts rising from below above, but here the impact is straight on her forehead. And it is on the forehead, Adnya Chakra, that she is receiving the command. Samans came to her from her being summit. From her being summit, the Samans are coming to her. Adnya, command is coming to her chakra, the wheel from which things will start moving now in that. The command is for Savitri to get ready to receive the full force in her soul and in her spirit so that she would meet death and conquer death and change fate. It is fated that Satyavan must die, but that has to be halted. It cannot be her fate really. And for that, the command has come. Savitri, rise, get up, do the yoga. How is the divine power, divine Shakti in your soul? That is what it is saying. Now, the entry of this command is on the forehead center chakra or lotus, whatever you want to call it. This adnya chakra or this lotus here is of white color. It's a white lotus with just two petals. Now that itself is something significant, important also of course. The two petals would mean will and knowledge, the divine will and the divine sight. They have opened out here. The will, the force with which things will be done here, sankalpa, will, jnana, knowledge, 
it is at that center Savitri is receiving the command. Her will and her knowledge are getting awakened. So these two petals would mean will and knowledge. It is by will that the divine fire is ignited in his soul and it is that burns and receives the spiritual bounties, spiritual power, knowledge, whatever is required. It is by knowledge that she will know what to do and how to proceed. So the center is already awakened. The lotus petals have opened out with will and knowledge. Above her brows where will and knowledge meet, a mighty voice invaded mortal space. Savitri has taken the mortal birth. And it is in that mortal space that this lotus has now bloomed with the impact of the mighty voice. Knowledge and will has set themselves into operation. So this is the command Adnya which Savitri is going to receive at this place here. A summon from her being summit came and the will and knowledge have awakened there. Now that command seems to be coming from inaccessible heights. Savitri's origin is in the transcendent. And to the mortal creature, Savitri has taken a mortal birth. She is human. And therefore, that origin of hers, the source of hers, is inaccessible. But the voice, the commanding spirit from there, is guarding Savitri all the while. And it is that which is rushing into human Savitri. It seemed to come from inaccessible heights and yet was intimate with all the world. That Shakti, that power has concern with this world. It is intimate, it is close to the blight of this world, to the possibilities which can happen and grow and flourish in this world. It is in direct contact with this world. At the same time, in, it is inaccessible. And yet was intimate with all the world and knew the meaning, the steps of time, the moments of time, the course of events, the sequence of happenings. It has full knowledge of it. It has the knowledge of all the moments of time. It has what we would call Trikara Drishti. It knows the past, it knows the present, it knows the future, and knew the meaning of the steps of time. It has Trikara Drishti when we see from our point of view. The eye has opened. The Divya Chakshu has opened, the Divine Eye has opened, it sees things, it sees all the moments of time, the past, the present, the future. The Kaladishti has opened the moment that voice makes his entry on Savitri's forehead and knew the meaning of the steps of time and saw eternal destinies change the scene filling the fire prospect of the cosmic beings. It has the sweep of the entire creation of the cosmos, of the universe. And it has pervaded every nook and corner of this creation. It knows what is happening, what is going to happen, what must happen. It has the full knowledge of all those things. Above her brows where will and knowledge meet, 
a mighty voice invaded mortal space it seemed to come from inaccessible heights and yet was intimate with all the world and knew the meaning with the steps of time and saw eternal destinies change the scene filling the far prospect of the cosmic gaze that is how the yogic life of savitri begins it is the transcendental tantra which is getting into operation in savitri as it savitri's forest center has opened the two petals have opened out fully the two petals also would indicate the manifest and the unmanifest shiva and shakti in the tantric language it would mean shiva and shakti it is these which have now come into operation will and knowledge these have already opened will shakti knowledge shiva he has a knowledge of everything and these two centers now have come into operation this center has come now into operation the manifest and the unmanifest what is manifest what is going to manifest it is that which savitri has to attend and she has launched us straight away on the occult yogic path on the path of the occult luminous occult the luminous tantra yoga in contrast to the beginning of savitri's yoga we had ashvapati's yoga which is of the vedantic kind belonging to the adhyatma the spiritual he is climbing the ascending slopes of heaven Ashwati is climbing. His yoga begins with the climbing of the ascending slopes of heaven, Arohana. Savitri's yoga is beginning. We straightway descend of the supreme voice into our being. That is the difference between the yoga of Ashwati and Savitri. He is climbing up ascending slopes of heaven. Savitri's yoga is beginning. We are coming down of the Mahavakya, the voice, the command, the summons. It is that which makes the beginning of Savitri Yoga. Now, functionally, these two are different, and therefore also, in terms of realizations, the two yogas are different. possibilities ashwati yoga is for a certain purpose savitri yoga is for a certain purpose and it is in relationship with these two that the yogas are being described here also savitri yoga is for the conquest of death ashwati yoga is to bring down the divine power upon the earth so that it is through her the divine manifestation can take place his main concern is to bring down the divine power upon the earth and whatever is required for that he is going to do it whatever hardships are involved howsoever painful and severe may be the path ashwapati he is going to face all those difficulties he is going to meet all the challenges of the antagonist powers which would come in the way of the descent of the divine shakti upon the earth severe and painful that is how shabindo describes his yoga 
severe and painful. Mother also speaks about Sri Aurobindo. He who has suffered, struggled for us, achieved for all us, who has struggled for us, who has suffered for us. That is the divine avatar's work in order to bring down the supreme power upon the earth. He has to suffer for that he suffered. Savitri's yoga is for a different purpose. And it is in relationship with that, that the divine power is descending straight away into the center of will and noise. 